We are delighted to welcome in our boss. Uh, he is Mitch Rosen, the vice president and of BetQL, the director of operations, brand manager of WSCR, Sports Radio 670, The Score. And Mitch, thanks for coming in. We hey, Mo, it, David, uh, you know, I'd say it's a good morning. It's a sad morning yep. as, you know, everybody, not just here at Odyssey and XRT and The Score and all the stations, but... I think the entire, you know, city of Chicago is in a, in a place of mourning uh, today. I think you're right. And we saw that on Sunday. The outpouring was amazing beginning when the news broke at 10 o'clock and it made for a very long Sunday. But a lot of the tributes, all of the tributes were the same in sort of the everyone felt like Lynn really was their best friend. Yeah, people, everybody that knew him loved him. And there aren't many people in life, not just in the workplace, but you don't meet many people in life that you really like. And, you know, love is a strong word, but so many people loved him and mm -hmm. appreciated who he was as a human being. And it's universal, Mull. I mean, you would see yeah. him in the hallways, you'd see him at games, and there weren't many people like him. No, he, he was just... He was one of these people. There, there are certain people that have like a an aura, essence, a light to them that shines and that encompasses everyone and makes everyone feel good. I, I mean, the guy had some of the greatest stories I've ever heard. There were some, the, the greatest story I've ever heard was him at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, we can tell that story. But, but Mitch, let's start yeah. with uh, some of your memories of him. You you were his boss yeah. here <laughs> at Odyssey. You ran XRT for a few yeah, years. Yeah, I don't listen. We worked together. I um, you know a number of years ago, um, I was asked to help and, and oversee XRT. And first thing I said to my boss at the time, I don't know that much about music. He said, "Don't worry about music. It's about managing people and just great the people at XRT are unbelievable. Just." Salt of the earth, great people. And my fondest memory was in 2016. Everybody knows Lynn was one of the biggest Cub fans, a season ticket holder for 25 years. And we'd go to so many games, even when doing mornings, you know, he'd go to night games and stumble in in the morning after being up till 11 o'clock in an extra inning game, you know, against the Pirates in, in April. So he, uh, a, a huge Cub fan. So the Cubs win in 2016. As a rights holder, we had X amount of tickets on one of the buses in the parade. And it didn't even click twice in my head. You know, I put a couple people from sales, I think a personality or two from the score, and I had a slot open. And I remember calling him, and we were going 100 miles an hour with parade coverage and coming back from Cleveland. And I call, hey, go, Lynn, what's, oh, what? Is, I go, hey, I have something, and no is not going to be an answer. I've got a slot for you on one of the buses on the parade. And it was like dead silence, like radio silence. Like the alarms would have went off on, on, you know, that we were off the air. He goes, what? I go, you have to be at this place at this time, and you're in the parade. And just remembering, and, and I think I tweeted a picture of yesterday of him on the bus, and he was in his Cubs sport coat. Yeah, yeah. And just a look on his face. And that, that's how I'm going to remember Lynn. You know, I'm not going to remember Lynn being sick or at other places. My memory of Lynn, and I think so many others as a Cub fan, is him – you know, on that bus, smiling, he had sunglasses on, just, you know, the grin. And he waited like so many Cub fans for the World Series. And I remember him, I go, where did you watch it? Well, I was at my friend Tom's in Evanston, then the rain delay. I had so much, you know, angst. I ran home and, you know, it just, um, man, that, that's, that's what I'm going to remember. Just a unbelievable personality, yep. loved music, loved his family, loved his colleagues, Love sports. He was a score, you know, dedicated listener. He'd call in or text when he was listening. He was the manager of the score softball team. He made the lineup. <laughs> he just, man, he just enjoyed life. He really did. You tell everyone before they come on the air, you always say, have fun today. Have fun today. That's a very consistent uh, bit of advice that you give everybody. Lynn had fun every day. What was it about his personality that you'll remember that allowed him to get to the point where he just seemed like he was always having a good time and always very quick with a smile, uh, just a joke, or whatever the case may be? He had fun. He did. He was playing rock and roll. He was going to concerts at night. Yeah. Even when he, you know, he'd have client meetings here, he'd have fun with it. It just, he had fun with life. He enjoyed it. He, um, you know, was saying, you know, he was everybody's best friend. He would meet someone after 10 minutes and they thought he, he made him feel like they were yeah. his best friend. And that's what made him special. And, you know, I remember U2 was in town years ago 
And he came in the next one. He goes, I was uh, drinking whiskey with Bono uh, last night. I go, what? He goes, yeah, we ended up at, you know, someplace. And he, it, Lynn was, didn't BS. I mean, no. it was, it was no. true. And, and people loved him, you know, rock and roll stars, you know, everybody loved him. There never met a person that, oh, Lynn Bramer. No, everybody loved him. So my favorite story with Lynn, and I, I, I hope you've heard it already. And I think he said it on the score, but, uh, we were out years ago and he was kind of holding court and he told this story. They made the movie, uh, hell, hell rock and roll, which is Chuck Berry's life story. And so, uh, they invited radio stations from around the country to go to the rock and roll hall of fame. And they were extras in the movie. So the idea was they were going to play Chuck Berry getting inducted in the hall of fame as the last scene of the movie. And so that all the XRT people are there and it's, you know, Here's the last scene. And he comes hopping out and they're going crazy. And the director comes out like, listen, that's great, but we need a little bit more. Just a little bit more. They're all going crazy. It's almost there, but we need. So by the seventh take, the XRT people leave <laughs> and they go back to the hotel. Like they're not going to sit there all day. They're like hours into it. So they go back to the hotel and they're they're having a couple drinks in the room and they're having some fun. And Lynn decides he's got to get out of the room and just get some air because there's so many people in this cramped room. And he goes outside and he leaves like the the uh, metal thing on the door to leave the door open. And he walks out. He walks out and he sees Eric Clapton standing at the elevator. So he runs back in the room and he's like, "You're not going to believe it. I just saw Eric Clapton." And they're all like, "You're." You're drunk. You're an idiot. You didn't see Eric Clapton. Someone who looked like him. Whatever. And Lynn is like, honest to God, I'm, I know who Eric Clapton is. And he just saw him at the elevator. No one believes him. <laughs> so he walks out. He says he, he walks out of the room and he's walking down the hall and he looks. And here is this guy with like the headband on. And he's walking down the hallway, half in the bag, pulling on a bottle of whiskey. And it's Keith Richards. <laughs> and he's just like, he can't believe it. And he said he would never like go up to a rock star. But he was so peeved about this, uh, this Eric Clapton uh, clap back that he runs up to Keith and he's like, Keith, we're in a room right, right over here. We're in a room. Just pop your head in. You'll blow everyone's mind. And Keith like doesn't even make eye contact. Does just pulls on his bottle of whiskey and keeps walking. And Lynn is now like, we're right. The room is right here. Just <laughs> pop your head and they won't believe. You'll blow all their minds. And Keith Richards doesn't even look at him, doesn't do anything. He comes abreast of the room. He breaks away, runs in front of Lynn, throws the door open. And all these XRT people are sitting in the room. And Keith Richards runs in and says, people, don't blow your minds. And he Poof, he's gone. <laughs> and everybody is like in, in shock. And Lynn comes in right behind him and says, I told you I saw Clapton. <laughs> That's Lynn, right? That's Isn't Lynn. that awesome? Oh. That's awesome. That is a great uh, story. Yeah. One yeah. thing I just want to say, you know, think about the XRT family, Terry Hammer, Marty Leonard's, Ryan Arnold, you know, Annalisa, um, Laura Duncan, Greg, so Everett, Chris Wake. Everybody at XRT today, and then at 10 o'clock this morning and XRT, they're going to pay tribute, you know, to the legend, and uh, it's going to be a special day in uh, remembering his legacy, and just think about Lynn today. Terry did an amazing job yesterday getting mm -hmm. through that, yeah. uh, just with, with people who would, would just flock to XRT after hearing the news just to feel some sort of connection, and and. If, if, if today's anything like yesterday, it's going to be a, a tremendous yep. tribute. And it just shows you, too, the power of radio and the power of right. our medium that yep. people, uh, it, you know, everybody knows Lynn. Lynn didn't know everybody. And, again, yeah. I reinforce the power of, of what voice, you guys do every day. It, 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 we, what we used coming in, that was for the, the Bear show on FX. They, they yes. used Lynn's on intro Hulu. Yep. on Hulu. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was his voice and his introduction because he was the voice that everyone recognized and when you hear his voice you smile i mean again you know one of the greatest lights around here for sure and in chicago has has gone out and it is the world is a lesser place it, it, you can't help but feel a little hole in your heart in your soul if you knew him and it is it's just it's just a sad sad day and, and I guess, you know, we will shift into kind of telling the old stories and remembering different things and feeling happy about it. But, you know, there's a great, there's a great like uh, poem, I'm only in the next room. And it's basically like nothing has changed. You can carry on. I'm just in the next room. I think we, we will think of him just, you know, 
in the next studio, maybe, while we're here. Great point. Well put. All right. Uh, man, that's a tough one. Uh, thank you, Mitch. Thanks, we really guys. appreciate it. Have fun. It's Mully and Hall. <laughs> You're the best. At Chicago Sports Radio, 6-7 of the score.